let's continue the next section uh, with rules of powers with the same days. So let's try to use this. We are going to call a base to any variable or number that repeats several times. Let's start with the most basic rule. Any variable or number to the zero power always is going to give me one. The only exception is that number is different of zero. Mm -hmm. So zero to the zero is not defined. In the same way, a to the one power is going to be the number or variable for itself. Usually we use this notation, but in reality we are hiding the power one that is always for every single number that we use. Second, a to the second power. This power is telling me how many times is going to multiply this variable for itself. So a times a. So in the same way, take a to the third power and it's going to be a times a times a. Three times. Those are the basic rules. Now what we can do with that? Let's start with the operations. First, multiplications with the same days. Okay, let's start to use our previous examples. a to the second power times a to the third power. So this is going to be a times a from the first part and times a times a times a. If you see, the power is telling me how many times you are going to multiply for itself. We can see one, two, three, four, five times. And that is a to the five. So let's try to figure it out one short cut how to use two and three to find five. Probably you are get already guess. If we add the exponents, we can obtain directly the answer and avoid to write all this. So the main rule whenever we have to multiply one base with different powers is only at the exponents. It doesn't matter the value of the exponents. If we have a multiplication, we are going to add them. For example, suppose that we have uh, now another base f to the 6 times f to the 4 power. So f6 plus 4 equal 6 plus 4 is going to be 10. Done. In this class we are going to learn about scientific notations and powers of 10. So we are going to use a lot the number 10 to denotate digits. So let's try 10 to the second power of 100 times 10 to the 20 power. So it's very simple, it's the same base, so we only have to add the exponents. And that's all. Very simple. We don't have to deal with 22 zeros because we have already the amount in this case. Uh, now, the next operator that we are going to use, and we need to be very careful, is whenever we have several powers in size. So let's call to use a base inside powers. Okay, 
from the previous example let's see if we have a to the fourth power and we have the second power here we start to check from the most external power in this case it's tell me whatever is inside has to be multiplied for itself twice a to the fourth power times a to the fourth power correct and from the previous multiplications with the same base we are going to add the exponents so a 4 plus 4 is going to give me a to the 8th power mm -hmm. now let's try to find one shortcut how to use 4 and 2 to obtain a probably you already figured it out if we multiply 4 times 2 we can obtain exactly the final power and we can avoid to do all this demonstration so the main rule in this case a to the b power the c power is going to be a b times c let's try to use examples let's try to use um, b to the third power and to the ninth power so we have several powers so we are not going to write 9 times b cubic so but we can do b 3 times 9 equal b to the 27 power hmm. what about to use the powers of 10 that we were talking about yes why not 10 to the 8 power and 4 power is going to be 10 a times 4 equal 10 to the 32 power very good this is exactly what we are going to be solving but what happens if we have a lot of iteration with the same base let's try right now um, d for example uh, to the second power that is to the third power and also to the fourth power so we have several powers so we are not going to be solving individually because we have the same power several times we can repeat and extend so d to the two times three times four so we have four times three twelve twelve times two twenty four as simple like that so we cover right now multiplic when we have to add the exponent we have to multiply the exponent let's see what happens whenever we have divisions with powers or divisions with the same base okay so let's start little by little to identify how the divisions work with the base in fact if we have the base in the denominator so we can express this we have this one here but in order to simplify this and instead to be using fractions we can transform this variable into a, this denominator in be part of the numerator a one but we have to add a negative power this is going to give me a to the negative one mm -hmm. so it's what we call the inverse whenever we have a negative power it's telling me that the variable is going to be in a positive power in the a different position in this case we can identify numerator so it's telling me the correct value is in the denominator what about if we have use b to the minus one so if we want to move b to the numerator we are going to repeat the same exercise so we are going to subtract the power even 
if this one is negative so negative times negative is going to give me a positive number so we have 1 times b to the 1 power and at the end is b to the 1 power so you can see whenever we have a negative exponent is telling me that we are going to obtain a positive value moving to the different position if we find in the numerator the positive value from the exponent is going to be in the denominator if we have the negative value in the denominator it's going to obtain the positive value in the numerator okay from that you are going to use and identify in this class that it's very common to find expression like this for example 100 that if we use 10 times 10 or 10 to the second power this or express this like or simply 10 to the minus second power it's exactly the same Now, what happens if we have, for example, something like 5 divided by 3 to the second power? First, we can identify we don't have the same base. So the only thing that maybe we can do is 3 to the negative second power, and that will be all. We cannot do nothing else with that problem. What about start to introduce variables so it's very common to find a to the 9 with respect a to the 4 power so we can identify we, we have the same base in both sides numerator and denominator so the uh, variable that, ha that is in the denominator we can move and obtain one multiplication if you remember multiplication with the same base we are going to add so 8 9 plus minus 4 hmm. handling a uh, multiplication of operator positive times negative negative 8 9 minus 4 equal a to the hmm. 6 no, 8 to the 5 correct mm -hmm. so probably you start to guess so if we are going to try to find a main rule whenever we have divisions with the same base basically it's going to be a b with a c is going to be a b minus c this is going to be the main rule let's try with one example a to the third power divided a to the four so we are going to subtract the power that we have in the denominator so it's going to be a three minus four and it's going to be a to the negative one you can keep like that or as we learned in the previous it's going to be one over a Mm -hmm. sometimes your professor only cancel the powers in fact they are doing this solution be very careful because sometimes we are going to have things that, that can trick your eyes suppose that we have a to the 1 divided a to the negative 1 ok so following the same formula we have a we have 1 minus c but c in this case is minus one we're going to have negative times negative positive a to the second power so be very careful how you handle this rule we are going to subtract the power that we have there mm -hmm. finally and to finish this video and this part we are going to use the last operator roots R 
roots basically are the um, the inverse of the powers. Mm -hmm. So let's start with one simple example. Probably everybody have calculated the square root of four. In reality, we have one number to assign it here. I know, probably you already said, and that is two. But we never write, there is one number here. For the square root, we never write, we almost never write the number two. But let's use for this educative purpose. So this is the same four to the one half power. So the root is telling me the value of the denominator. Say, so what's going on? If you try in your calculator, four to the power 0 0.5 or one half is going to give you two. Okay, how we are sure about that? If I try to simplify, this is two to the second power and this is to half power. So this is an integer that affects only the numerator. So two, two divided by two, two to the one, and we never write this. So the roots basically is going to be what we have the denominator in the powers. So let's call it instead to inverse denominator of powers. Those are the roots. So if you remember, in the opposite operators, we are going to try to look for one one. This is the one that we need to obtain. Let's try with another example. B to the third power. Whenever we have a third uh, to a cube power, we always can cancel that with a cubic root. So it is saying like to have B three divided by three. One to give me the value. So what about if I try to use a, a square root of b to the fourth power, regular square root. That means b, four divided by two, is going to be b to the second power. And that's all. Mm -hmm. So, as you probably already figured it out, so the main rule for roots, or how we can try to find representation of roots, is going to be the n c root of one variable b is going to be a to the b divided by c. So if your calculator doesn't have all the roots possible, don't worry too much. All the calculators use the exponents and you can calculate previously what is this exponent that you have there and get rid of that. Let's try one example. Mm -hmm. Let's try the algebraic way from all these things. For example, if we try to find things like that, okay? Let's try to remember the recipe. Step zero, breathe, relax. Step number one, try to simplify. Can we simplify something here? Mm, no. Can we simplify something in the other side? No. Step number two. Identify the variables, the, the main variable and its position. I have the main variable in the denominator. Wow. Remember that we have the step 2.1 that says if we find the main variable in the denominator and we cannot find addition and subtraction around it. If you see careful, 
we have here one multiplication, we have there one division, but not ugly addition and subtractions around it. Okay? In that case, we can apply the sweet rule. So I'm going to write here. The sweet rule says in bold, in parentheses, the main variable and its power. Here is when the power is going to be important in that rule. Involve in parentheses the other side of the identity and switch the positions between the parent the new parentheses. So we're going to have x cubic equal 9 5 times 36 7. Okay? Still the problem is not solved. We can we have to simplify. Let's see. We are going to have a multiplication times an integer and a division times whatever is here. Let's start, let's start step by step. x cubic is going to be equal to 9 integers. If we divide by 1, we can apply the recipe for multiplication with the same base. Basically, this is going to affect only the numerator, but it's only for educative purpose follow all this. So 5 times 6, 0 uh, and 3. 5 times 3, we are going to have 180. 1 times 7 is 7. Now we have a division with three terms. Again we have an integer and a fraction. With fraction, integers we need to divide by 1. divided by 1, divided 180, divided by 7. And we can apply the sandwich rule. Sandwich rule says multiply the extremes, top times the bottom, to create the new numerator. And multiply the inner part to create the new denominator. x cubic is going to be 9 times 7 is going to be 60 um, 63 and we have 180 let's see can we simplify more this mm, apparently if we divide by 3 if we divide by 3 is going to be 21 over um, 60 Correct? Can we simplify more? Mm, yeah, apparently we can divide by 3 again, 7, and if we divide by 3, it's going to be 20. And that's all. But the problem is not complete yet. So, we have right now x cubic. So we already did step number one again. That was simplify. Step number two. Mm -hmm. Identify your main variable and the position. Numerator. Okay. Step number three. Go farther. The farthest that we can go from the variable is at the top. So we cannot go really far. So this is the operator. Identify the operator, that is going to be the power, and the magnitude associated to that operator. Step number four, rewrite your equation. So, x cubic equals 7 divided by 20. And the recipe says, mm -hmm. step number five, apply the opposite operator. So, what is opposite to... Uh, one power, the root. So I need to apply the cubic root. Step number six, balance. So I need to do the same for the other side, cubic root. Following this, we can cancel, or it's going to give me x3 divided by 3. 
and at the end simplifying is going to be so cubic root of 7 divided by 20 so we can solve this and obtain the cubic root and we are going to obtain the answer if we don't have cubic roots so always you can solve this and remember that your calculator you can solve 1 divided by 3 that is going to be approximately 720 to the 0 0.333 we can solve this mm -hmm. so this is going to be the answer any one of these is correct a correct expression and with that we finish this section mm -hmm. so this is how we are going to be using again right now roots to cancel and obtain the number one and simplify your variable okay i'll see you in the next video